Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I want to talk to you about the Lenten Bible Journaling Challenge and a little more information than I gave you the last time we discussed it. And this challenge is one that has no rules. You can do it every day. You can do it every other day or once a week, whatever you want. I'm doing every day. And you can use the verses or the devotionals for your inspiration in Bible journaling. The link in the description down below will get you to this list so you can follow along with the list of verses. And here is the book that we're using. And I just randomly picked it. Well, I shouldn't say randomly. The Holy Spirit apparently picked it because I'm finding some real nuggets in here that I'm really enjoying quite a bit. And for a little $3 book, I thought it was pretty darn good buy to get that much inspiration already out of just a few days worth of reading it. I put the days that I'm doing them on the actual corners of the page so that I keep track of where I am. And that helps because we're skipping Sundays because that's what you do in Lent. You don't count Sundays in Lent to get for 40 days from Ash Wednesday to Easter. The first day had uh, Genesis 3 as the verse. God doesn't take sin lightly was the phrase that I wrote down from the devotional. And even though I take sin seriously, I don't take it seriously enough. And I wrote here to forgive me, Jesus had to die, to die a horrible, brutal death. Taking his amazing sacrifice for granted belittles what he had to go through. And it makes light of my own failures. And that's what I want to spend this Lent really dwelling on is what he did, what his sacrifice meant, and what I need to do about it. Now, this is the reason why I switched Bibles. I had this page already done with put the apple back on the tree for this Bible journaling page in my regular Bible. This is the one I, I use the most and I like the most, but that page was taken. So I switched to a different Bible for that last one. And having several Bibles helps me to be able to do a verse, maybe a, a second verse on the same page kind of thing. This one was the rainbow of promise. It was all about the bow. And I hadn't really thought about what they wrote in the devotional, which, which is that God would sooner the point the bow at his son than at us. That is the gist of the promise, the covenant, that he was not going to destroy us. He was going to take that on himself. And what a beautiful thing. I hadn't thought about the rainbow as a bow either, <laughs> you know, bow and arrow kind of thing, but making the heart of it pointing upward to Jesus was impactful for me. The next day's devotion was from Genesis 15, and it was a rather gruesome story. It's one that's kind of icky, but the way that they used to make covenants was that they would take dead bodies, the dead carcasses of animals, and divide them in half, and then two people would walk through that river of blood together, basically saying, if I don't keep my covenant to you, my promise to you, buddy, then let this be done to me. Let me be as dead and cut in half as these animals. But God walked through alone. His, his flaming torch went through alone. God keeps both sides of the covenant himself. He knew we couldn't do it. He went to the grave to give us the skies. He experienced the darkness to bring us into the light. So I wrote, let this be done to me if I fail to keep my promise. And then wrote that from God that he walked the path of blood alone, no need for Abram to do so, since he planned to keep the covenant on his own. And I wrote down why I'm so grateful for that. Because I couldn't keep it either. Goodness gracious, if Abram couldn't do it, and he's a father in the faith, I have no hope of getting through. So the fact that God did it himself, and that amazes me totally. For my next idea, I had such a big one, I switched to my interleaved Bible that has full blank pages. And this is a sample sneak peek at a sample that's coming up in the class called Seeing the Scriptures, March 1st, it's gonna launch. And here is the page for yesterday, which is the Lord provides a sacrifice. The scripture that we read was all about the sacrifice for, his, for the son Isaac being provided by God. It was caught in the thicket and was able to be sacrificed in his place. And Jesus was provided as the lamb for the sacrifice for us. And the light cascading down shows that it's God providing that sacrifice. And the, the ram is caught in the thicket of the brush. And Jesus was caught in the thicket of the crown of thorns 
I mean, just there are so many parallels between this, and it was a, a beautiful devotion that led to a lot of time of time spent thinking about the parallels between those two stories and what they tell us about God. If you're doing the challenge and would like to share more of your work, but you don't want to share it publicly, I understand for the, a lot of people this is very personal, then one of my followers just started a Facebook group for the challenge. And I'm hoping it will continue because I'd love to do more with a Facebook group like that. There's a link in the description to get to that one and also to my regular student group. So there's another group that is for all my classes together. You can share on that one as well if you prefer that and have a non-believing audience that you might share a little bit of your work with. And that is about it for me for today. Happy Sunday. Have a beautiful and a blessed day. And I will see you again next week here on YouTube.